Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, welcome to this homily on this first Sunday of Lent. I have installed fire extinguishers in the building and they need to be serviced every year to clean them and fill new gas again. I have used two different companies in the past for the same. One week before the expiry date in the following year, one or the other would call and say, Father, it is time to service the fire extinguishers. Shall we come and do it? They remind us to be effective, they must be regularly serviced. The church gives us this yearly time of Lent so that we regain the strength and the spirit which may have eroded during the year. That's why it is called a season of grace, because it is a time of spiritual renewal and growth. And at the beginning of Lent, we are given the example of Jesus, who went into the desert where he fasted and was tempted by Satan but became victorious over him. We too are given time to refocus on who we are, where we have been going in our spiritual life and in our struggle with Satan. Today, as we reflect upon the temptation of Jesus in the desert, think of this. None of the disciples was there with Jesus when it happened. So how did they come to know about it? By all means, Jesus must have told them. And that means, even for Jesus, it was important that his disciples and we know about it. And I can think of only two possible reasons. Firstly, Jesus wants us to know that as fully human, he experienced the same temptations and struggles and as any other human person. But he was able to overcome them, which sets an example for us to follow. As the letter to the Hebrews says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every respect, yet without sin. Hebrews 4.13. Secondly, Jesus wanted us to know very clearly that Satan is real. He is a real adversary who seeks to deceive and destroy us. But at the same time, Jesus assures us that he has no ultimate victory over God's children. Let's come to the passage itself, where Jesus, the second Adam, overcomes the temptations of Satan. This is in contrast with the first reading from the book of Genesis, where the first parents gave in to the temptation of Satan. As we see, Satan does not force anyone to follow his ways, but literally tempts through lies and deceits and half-truths. That's why the Gospel of St. John says that the Satan is the liar and father of lies. John 8, 44. Adam and Eve believed his deceitful words. They did not recognize he is a liar. On the contrary, Jesus knew the nature of Satan and hence he was able to overcome his tempting words, his deceitful ways. Dear brothers and sisters, we need to discern the ways in which Satan comes to us. It is not at all in obvious ways, but in very, very subtle ways. So it is not easy to recognize him, to understand his lies and tricks. We know the traditional depiction of Satan, of evil, as a dark, ugly creature with the long tail, horns, red eyes, etc. This itself is a deception. Who would be tempted by such a terrifying creature? Nobody will pay attention to him at all, but will run away from him. No, he does not come like that. He comes like our good friends 
well-wishers, supporters. That's how he came to Eve, giving her tips to become good, become wiser. That's how he came to Jesus. He was in fact telling him, friend, are you not hungry? Why unnecessarily you must suffer, you must starve. And turning these stones to bread, you can also prove yourself as a son of God. Again, putting Jesus on the pinnacle of Jerusalem temple, he said, after all, you have only three years to make disciples. So start well, gloriously, jumping down from the pinnacle of the temple in front of the thousands gathered there. They will immediately become your disciples. They all seem to be very friendly and reasonable advices from a well-wisher. But Jesus knew that he was a liar. All temptations are subtle. And you yield to one, you become more prone to yield to the next. And you resist one, the stronger you feel to resist the next. Keeping well in mind always that the temptations of Satan are so subtle and often appears sweet and sound. Let's look at the three temptations Jesus faced. The first temptation, Satan telling Jesus, if you are the son of God, ask these stones to become bread. This would prove that Jesus is the son of God and that he is the new Moses because Moses provided bread in the desert in the Old Testament. And this was where something very simple for Jesus to do but he did not do it. For he, he came not to provide bread like Moses in the desert, but to become bread, life-giving bread, which required that he die. But still, he would make bread for others, but not for himself. He multiplied bread for others. He broke the suppressing practices of law all for others, not for himself. He is asking us to shed the selfish attitude that what I have is for my use. There are so many people who think that what they have, of course, as a fruit of their hard labor, is for themselves to enjoy. But as St. Paul says, all gifts are for common good. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. The second temptation was to jump from the parapet of the Jerusalem temple. And it was asking Jesus to become famous and to use shortcuts for success. But Satan was putting it so nicely. He was in a way telling Jesus, what a great start of your mission it would be with such a great miracle jumping from the pinnacle of the temple in front of the thousands gathered there. And when you land unheard, as the angels carry him, carry you, say, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. This would be a very, very effective start of your mission. Much better than to come and start preaching to a few people, repent. And this would win for you thousands of followers immediately. Yes, Satan acts as a very good business consultant, giving very nice advice. But Jesus told him, you cannot attract people to conversion by strength and power. Jesus was not declared Messiah when he raised the dead, multiplied bread, or performed many other miracles but when he died on the cross. Then the centurion, a Gentile said, surely this man was a son of God. He had already told Nicodemus, when I am lifted up, I shall attract many to myself on the cross, not by jumping down from the temple top, not by doing many great things. You may remember in the movie, Passion of Christ, Satan is again and again after Jesus, whispering in his ears, 
to give up. For the suffering will be too much, too much pain, that he cannot save the world, that the world does not deserve so much suffering from him, etc. And he follows Jesus till Calvary, hoping Jesus would pull back, knowing the pain that he has to undergo. But he is definitively destroyed when Jesus dies on the cross. People will keep you in their hearts, not when you have money and power and position, but when you have become one of them, when you have become their bread, their servant. Showing your power is not going to get you into people's hearts, but showing your service, your simplicity. As we know, hundreds of people were converted to Christianity in the early centuries when they saw the joyful perseverance in the Christians in, on the face of persecutions, not because of the power they had. And thirdly, Jesus is tempted when Satan takes him to the top of a mountain and he is shown the whole wealth and power of the world from there. And Satan tells Jesus, all these have been given to me and I will give all these to you if you worship me for a second. Only a second and nobody would also know. But how did he receive all the power of the earth? Through the sin, the disobedience of Adam. And Jesus came to regain it which he accomplished through his death on the cross. That is why before his ascension, Jesus told his disciples, all authority has been given to me, Matthew 28, 18. Now Satan is telling Jesus that Jesus could accomplish his redemptive work without the cross, without the horrible suffering, had he only worshipped him for a second and in complete secret. But Jesus knew that the true way to bring salvation to people is through the cross. He was showing an example to those who find it all right to achieve their goals, such and wealth through unrighteous means. There are so many ways to make easy money and success. But Jesus wants us not to earn anything in unrighteous ways. Dear sisters and brothers, on this first Sunday of the land, we are reminded that Satan is real and our fight is never ending with him. But Jesus has defeated him and hence he cannot have ultimate win over us. In Jesus' name and in his power, we have the ultimate victory in our battle against him. May these 40 days strengthen us in our spiritual battle and fill us with the joy of resurrection. Amen.